this is from Pearl. Hello, Bill. I received an 18K offer from a company. However, I learned that the role could pay up to 27K. I already stated my current salary, 6K, in the mandatory field at the application stage. Negotiating may look awkward since they know my current salary and they would likely decline. Please, how can I go about this? I have nine years experience in comparison to the role's five years. Okay, Pearl, so let me get this straight. So they offered you 18K. Presumably they've indicated to you that the range goes up to 27K. Presumably that's in the job posting. Now, you already stated your current salary, 6K, as a mandatory field in the application stage. Okay, so here's the deal. Salary negotiation is, you can't explain it in two minutes. If there's a lot of principles at play here. Unfortunately, the basic principles all start with the things that you've already done. So you've already told them what your current salary is. For you in the future and for other people, just so you know, that's none of their business and they have no legal right to an answer, and there is no place they can go, at least in any country I've ever dealt with or I know about, certainly in the West, but even in India, as far as I know, like in other places, there's no place where they can go. There's no central database where a company can look up your salary history. So whatever answer you provide them voluntarily, they can't verify, just so you know this. It's like if somebody asked you, what's your credit card number? Like they can ask, but if if you answer, one could argue that you're being a fool if you give them your credit card number just because they ask. You see, your current salary or your previous salary, that's all personal and confidential. Usually people treat it like that. Now, recruiters and things, they tend to be a bit underhanded. They tend to push for things that they legally have no right to, but they know that some people will just answer if they ask, so they push that as far as it'll go. Now, because you've already answered this, and if you've answered truthfully, that does put you at a bit of a disadvantage. It's like going to buy a car or something and the salesperson asking you, okay, what's the upper limit that you would ever possibly spend on this car? And you say, oh, that would be, I don't know, you answer truthfully, I don't know, $40,000. And they say, okay, well, for you, I'm gonna make you a special deal. This is 39.5. You see, they use that to their advantage and they know that you will pay that, you could pay that. And the more information they have on you, the more they can win. Now, your negotiating power doesn't come from how well you can persuade someone when you're negotiating. Negotiating power comes from having alternative options. So if you're currently making 6K and let's pretend that that job is secure and you're happy in the role, it's not gonna go away anytime soon, you could easily say no thank you to this new job and go back to your current job and be fine. That's your alternative to this job. So you've got two options, A and B. A is you stay where you are, B is you take this thing. Now, this job is not certain. If you have a job right now that's secure and it's a known quantity, you would have to be paid more money to take this because this is insecure. You could jump from your job that you're tolerating into something that could be just bad news. You take the job, it turns out they lied to you and you're actually doing different work for a different person. The person's a jerk. The conditions are terrible and maybe they don't even pay you what they said they were gonna pay you. You don't know, that could happen. So you're taking risk by leaving a decent job to go to this new one. So you have to be compensated for the risk. So you wouldn't take it obviously for 6K or maybe even 7K. You would have to have a non-trivial premium as you go to the new job. Now, maybe you know about this company. Maybe they've got a great reputation. So there's maybe less risk, or maybe you don't know anything about them, or you, you might have heard something bad about them, then you're gonna need a big premium. But at the end of the day, you don't have to do anything that you don't wanna do. You can ask for whatever amount of money you want and you don't have to justify it. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. Now, the other reality is that they can always refuse and there's nothing preventing them from doing that too. So you need to be able to ask for what you honestly feel it's worth. And if they ask you and they say, well, why are you asking for 25 when you're only making six right now. It's like, yeah, well, I got other offers. You could bluff. See, they're gonna use every trick in the book to try and get you for cheap. They're also gonna use every trick in the book to convince you that a bad situation is actually a good situation. These are the tactics they're gonna employ or that they could employ. Most people do. So just be prepared for that. The problem is when they ask you for personal and confidential information and you just oblige, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're putting yourself at a disadvantage. The reason people do this is because they think that, oh, I'm an ethical person and I wanna treat people honestly and I'm hoping that they'll do the same. 
Unfortunately, in this unscrupulous game, a little bit, unfortunately, a lot of recruiters don't honor that. They don't play by those rules. They take every advantage they can get. The fact that they asked you your current salary and made it a mandatory field, that signals to me that they are not doing this in good faith, that they are taking advantage of every possible thing they can do. So there you go. If you knew that the job pays anywhere between say 18 and 25, I would have put 18 as my salary, regardless of what your salary is. Even if you're unemployed, I would still put 18 if it's a mandatory field. Now from here, you don't have to feel like your hands are tied. You can go in there, you could ask for anything. You're gonna need a significant premium and don't be afraid to ask for it. You don't have to justify yourself for them. If they say, well, why do you need that? You said this, it's like, well, I've got other offers and that's my business, I need this amount. And then you take it or leave it. If they say yes, great. If they say no, there's always that chance. And that's just the way it's done. That's the way you have to do it because that's the reality of it. Now, what you would do in an ideal situation is go out and get other offers. When you have a selection of two or three offers or two or three options, say you've got interviews lined up with other companies. So even if this one doesn't pan out or they're only willing to hire you for a very little amount of money, you've got other options. That's the secret to winning at this game. And you don't have to take anything that you don't want to take that doesn't make sense for you. Okay, so I know that was a very long-winded answer, but hopefully that's helpful for you. That's a great question, Pearl. Yeah, Pearl says the current salary was a mandatory fill. Yeah, I know that. I know that. You could put 6000 you could put 27000 you could put 18000 You know what I'm saying? They're asking you something that they shouldn't be asking you ethically. You understand what I'm saying? They're doing it because even though they don't have the right to that information, they are trying to push what's ethical and what's legal. You understand? Don't play their game. Don't fall into that trap. That would be my advice. So you want my current salary? You're making it a mandatory field? Okay, hey, two can play that game. My current salary is 18. That's the low limit of this job? Okay, there we go. It's 18. Or whatever, 17, something like that. That's how I would do it. Now, you can't go back and wind back the clock. So you're going from this point on, you've already filled in six, that's fine. What I'd recommend is you go through the process. Don't give them any indication that you're going to demand a lot of money. Just go through the process as far as you can. And then if you get to the end, and if they give you an offer, then you turn around and say, this is great. Thank you for the offer. I'm very excited. I look forward to working with you guys. I'm really over the moon about this. I've gone over the offer. Everything looks really good. I can do the vacation. I can do the work conditions. I can do the hours. I can do the holidays. I can do the sick time. It's all fine. Checks out. I just need you to pencil in this number instead of this one. And then we got a deal. I can start whenever you want. And if they balk at that and say, no, sorry, deal's off. It's like, okay, well, now you know. But there's actual pressure for them to say yes, because if they made you the offer, they do not want you to turn it down. It's embarrassing for them if you do. So a lot of times, and I'm speaking as someone who's been on the other side of the table, if it takes just a little bit more money and they got you, they'll be like, okay, we've put so much time into this process. We put so much time into this individual. We've selected them. That's the one we want. If it takes just a little bit more, it's okay, fine, whatever, just get them. And then we can end this and get on with it. I wish you the best, Pearl. I think you're going to be fine either way, but hopefully that makes sense. 